Welcome everybody, we are going to be talking about the Lord of the Rings and the Rings of Power. Yes, I am jumping on that bandwagon with everybody else, the other thousands of people who are jumping upon this bandwagon. And the first thing I want to say right off is that I am not a Tolkien expert. I read the uh, Lord of the Rings, the, the trilogy book. People say there's three of them. I thought there was only one book because it was one, like, 1,200-page book that had all three parts in it. So whether it was three books or one book, I don't know, but I read it when I was, like, 11 or 12, and then they came out with the movies, so I watched the movies, and I enjoyed them. I liked them a lot. Um, but I don't know anything beyond that, um, except for what people that I know and friends of mine have told me about them, which is a, a decent amount, but I don't know much about it. So, I am not a expert on any of this. I don't know. I can't tell you if this or that is wrong. I do know things look like uh, if Gandalf is in fact in this, it's wrong canonically because Gandalf was not sent down until the Third Age, and this takes place in the Second Age. Um, things like that I do know, just from people that I told me about. But I, I am not that person who is going to know everything about it. So, the review is thusly. And remember, I always have to say at least one good thing and one bad thing. So no matter if how I felt about it, I'd have to say a good or bad thing about it. The review is that it is just... Eh. It's a billion dollar B-movie, basically. The, the dialogue in the first part, the first episode, is not very good. It's, uh... It's stilted, it's poorly, the acting is poorly done, um, enough to where that the, the dialogue doesn't hit right. Um, some of it is just, they're trying to use this old style of speech to just, you can tell the people writing it, I don't think they actually understand how old speech works, they're just trying. Um, and so it's just, eh. If, if you know nothing about Tolkien, at all. If you know nothing about Lord of the Rings and you watch this, you would probably say, yeah, it's okay. It's all right. It's a good run-of-the-mill movie or show, whatever. One problem that people are saying about it being slow is, is, is true. It is painstakingly slow. However, it's because they are world-building at an, a breakneck pace. They are just shoving hours worth of world-building into every 5, 10, 15 minutes of, of this thing. And it is really, really hard to get through at points because, like, the second... Is, they actually do more world building in the second part than the first part. And the second, you know, episode, it's just... There are 15 minute. There's a 15 minute long chunk where it is just two people giving exposition and explaining the world to people. And explaining what's going on to people. Um, beyond that, if you are a Tolkien fan and you know anything at all about the Lord of the Rings, you'll be disappointed because it's not Lord of the Rings. It just isn't Lord of the Rings. It doesn't feel, especially it doesn't feel like the movies, um, because it's trying to be, it's trying to strike a balance between being a little more lighthearted and a little more in, in that dark feel of the of the movie trilogy, the first movie trilogy. And so you're going to be disappointed in it because it doesn't have that feel. Um, it is definitely, I tell you, it is definitely has its woke points to it. It is just, it's, it makes zero sense that the characters that they're in that you have, have um, the multi-ethnic cast is, feels very scattershot. It's like, with the exception of the fact that I don't know who he is, but the guy who plays the black elf is he's there on purpose to be a character because the interspecial issues that they have in this area, they want it to be white versus black because they want that visual of it. I mean, it's very obvious there the way they're speaking about it. There's this whole concept of like, he's a part of a, essentially a master race at this point, which is now, and it's neither white nor black, it's just is, it's elves. And the underclass, which are these white humans, are upset about it. And, they're, and they're, they keep 
referring to the fact that, well, this all happened because of what you did in the past and you have to take responsibility for what you white people did in the past. That's very obvious. It's very on the nose. Um, but if you get past that, it is what it is. It's again, there's like some of the casting makes no sense because you'll have like a black character and an Asian character and, and they have a white kid and a white person and a, and a black person with a Hispanic kid. It, the casting makes zero sense. Um, they did really push into the idea of like, you know, the dwarves are Scottish and the, um, the um, hobbits are Irish and, the um, people, well, the, uh, the elves are what, Nordic, I guess. And and the people, the regular every every humans are, I, I guess, are just some form of British, even though they have about six different accents, depending on who's talking. Because um, you have everything from Australian to New Zealand to British accents in this thing for the humans. Um, it's just, it's a B movie. It's like a, if you don't, if, if you, if somebody told you this was made on a million dollars, you'd say, yeah, okay. Um, the graphics, while they try to make them look grand, they're not that great. They're very, they're basically the quality of your average Unity video game. Um, it's, I remember uh, somebody I knew was playing GTA 4 on the Xbox or on the um, PlayStation 4, and the graphics were about as good as this. Like the water graphics are about as good. You could tell when they're the difference between when there's actual water that was filmed with the camera. And when the water is CGI, you can just tell it's not, they're not seamless, which is frustrating because I've seen other movies where that you can't tell the difference between the two. But in this, you can. I mean, it's very obvious what, what is CGI and what is not, which is rough considering, in fact, it's a billion dollars for eight one hour movies. And so it's, it's just blah. And I can't say, I know people want you to be like, oh, it's horrible. It's not the worst thing ever. It's Galadriel actress is not a good actress. Um, and you can tell that there was a change where she was originally going to be naked a lot in this thing. And they've decided not to, because like there's a scene in the water bunch and she's in a see-through gown and you can tell by the, by the camera takes and shots, they edited out a bunch of see-through nipples and stuff. Um, there's, you can tell they cut things out. You can tell this was going to be a lot more Game of Thrones. And then they came in and they said, well, let's make it a little more PG, PG-13. Um, because there's a bunch of things that you can tell that, that they're covering up on the way that they did it. Um, which I'm glad because it doesn't, it, Lord of the Rings does not need to be Game of Thrones. It just, just doesn't. But it's just, it's very, it's very bland. And uh, I had a friend who said that the, the, the actress who plays uh, Galadriel, uh, is a uh, black hole of charisma. And I won't go that far, but pretty close. She is awful. She has no charisma, no charm. She doesn't come across as a girl boss, and she doesn't come across as the anything. I can't tell in the series if she is supposed to actually be kind of a bad person, because it does feel like, I mean, at least it made the comment in, in the show that her hatred may be of what, what has been keeping uh, Sauron alive or whatever. Um, but I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be the case. I don't know if it's going to turn out to be, no, 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 it was just evil all along and you're, you're just great. And because she is, I can't tell if they're going to make the point that being motivated by hatred and, and uh, revenge is a good thing or a bad thing. But that's, that is the point. That is what they're, <laughs> that is what they're getting at in this is that her hatred and, and frustration is valid because uh, is at least it sounds like to some extent. Now she's a horrible person too. Like she lets these people be just absolutely killed by this sea creature, and then seconds later is shaming a guy for who was on the boat also for allowing them to, the people to be killed by a sea creature. It's really weird. Like no, there's no consistent. There's no. There is no. From what I can tell at this point, moral stances being taken in this outside of their, like I said, the obvious. Um, symbolism of the, of the great white versus black racism and all this idea, um, but it's just it's just a it is a very average run of the mill TV show. It is a very blah story. So the good thing is 
that I can say about it. Like I said, I always have to say a good thing. I always have to say a bad thing. The good thing I can say about it is that they are building a world and they appear to be conscious of their decisions in the show. It's not haphazard. They're, they're very, they're intentionally building this world. And then the negative is, is that it just, it does not look like a billion dollar franchise. It is a very bland story. It is a very uh, poorly acted by most of the actors. And it's very, very slow. Very, very slow. I mean, it feels like the first two hours feels like it should have been 40 minutes. As long as Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings was, this, Peter Jackson would have done these first two hours and the first 45 minutes of, of his, uh, his version of, of Lord of the Rings. It's, it's really long. But that's it. It's not, it's not great. It's not horrible. It's, it's, for Lord of the Rings fans, is it a slap in the face? Yes. Is it a, for, if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, it is a slap in the face. If you don't know anything about Lord of the Rings, there are going to be all kinds of people who are going to say they like the show because it's they don't know about Lord of the Rings. They're just watching a TV show. And they're going to like it because it's got orcs and it's got cave trolls and it's got ice trolls and it's got all these random you know, things and these, these creations that Tolkien created, which are interesting. And so um, do I recommend it? No. Would I say that it's the worst thing ever? No. Um, am I going to watch the rest of it? Probably not. I mean, maybe if I have some extra time on my hands and nothing really happening, you know, i got a couple hours to kill, maybe. But I'm not going to carve out any time to watch it because it's just not that good. And it's not, it's not good enough to hate watch or good enough to like it.